everyone, it's Sierra from The Home Blondie. This is my golden retriever, Harvey. I do have another dog, Lucy. They are afraid of my tripod. So as you can see, Harvey is leaving, but I'm sure they'll be in and out of this video. But this video is all about how I keep our house clean with two big shedding dogs. Now I wanna do this video because I do get messages on my Instagram asking how I keep our house clean. And okay, when I am taking a picture to post on Instagram, I'm cleaning my house first. So if you come to my house and see it in person, you will see it's not perfectly clean. I have dog hair everywhere, um, especially right now with the season changing so it's starting to warm up the snow is melting and our yard is a muddy mess so there are muddy paws all over so i definitely don't have a perfectly clean house but i have come up with some ways on how to make it easier to manage so if you are looking for tips on how to keep your house clean when you have shedding pets then keep on watching i'm going to share some of my favorite cleaning tools and just how i try to stay on top of it so i just looked over on my coffee table and i had this little tool there and this is a nail grinder that i just recently bought from amazon and the reason that i have it sitting on my coffee table is because i'm trying to expose my dogs to it before i actually try to use it on them but this does bring me to my first point in how to keep your house clean when you have dogs so the most important thing is keeping your dogs groomed and cleaned so we try to get our dogs professionally groomed seasonally so when they're starting to lose their old coat and getting in their new coat they tend to shed more and so that's when we try to have them professionally groomed we use a mobile dog grooming service that comes to our house and then they do it in their van i just find that that's like a little less traumatizing for them and it's really nice because I don't have to put them in my car and drive them there. It's just like a time saving hack. And usually during the time when they're getting groomed, I will take that opportunity to deep clean our house. So that's something that I actually really look forward to seasonally, but it can be very expensive to get your dogs professionally groomed. So if you're like us and don't wanna do it like so often, then you can do it yourself at home too. So we will try to bathe them regularly I will be honest like we weren't the best about doing that in the past because it was just not a fun experience because they would be like trying to get out of the tub and it was just messy but the more that you do it the better they will get accustomed to it something that's been really helpful is getting a detachable shower head so one that like pulls down from the wall and that just makes it a lot easier to rinse off your dogs in the tub and if you are afraid about like clogging your drains with all of their fur then you could also take them to i think it's pet supplies plus um we have a card there i think you can buy like five washes for 25 dollars or something it's kind of like a car wash but they have two like self-service tubs at least at the one by our house like one that's lower to the ground and then another one that's a little bit higher up and they have all of the soaps there and they even have like the big dryers so you do it yourself but that's just really nice because then you don't have to like get your bathroom all dirty or clog up your drain so we will use that too so the last thing that i want to say before i get into like actually cleaning and showing you what i use i want to touch on the different materials in your home when you do have pets so we recently replaced our flooring. We had carpet and now we have like a laminate type wood. And the reason that we did that was because the carpet was getting really gross with our dogs and really difficult to clean. But I will say with the new laminate flooring, the sound of the dog's nails walking across the floor 
is like nails on a chalkboard. Um, not exactly, it sounds different, but it's just like that triggering feeling. But it just sounds like clicking, clicking, clicking all across the floor. You have to weigh your pros and cons when you are like deciding what type of materials to have in your home. Um, so that's a reason why I bought this nail grinder because I'm hoping if I can trim their nails more regularly at home, like the shorter they are, hopefully, that just sound won't be so bad on the floor. But also you wanna think about colors that you have for your furniture and like what types of materials are going to resist pet hair. Now, if you watched my last video, you would have seen it was a review of our sectional. And in that video, I mentioned that I went with this darker color because of our dogs. Of course, I wanted the like, white beautiful couch but that would have just been a nightmare but i do mix in like lighter colored things like for instance this blanket which which is washable i also have a white rug which some of you will probably think I am crazy for doing that. I think I am kind of crazy for having this white rug, but that's something that I can wash. So that's kind of an obvious, but just be mindful when you are purchasing things. If you are going to be like so stressed about your dogs ruining it, then it's just like not worth having if you can't just feel relaxed in your own home. So this is something that I feel like I mention all of the time, but I swear by this lint roller for pet hair. It's called the Chom Chom Roller and you can get it on Amazon. I think it's like 20 or $30 and it is worth every penny. I actually purchased another one to keep in our bedroom so that I can lint roll our bed. Um, and then this one I just keep out here. Well, I keep it in a drawer, <laughs> but I use it mostly like in our living room and it is just amazing at getting off the pet hair. Now I try to do this every day, but I'm not perfect. I miss days. So right now there's quite a bit of pet hair on the couch. So I will show you how this works. So now I've gone over the whole couch and you can see there's like a little bit of hair wrapped around here. So this um, material here, creates kind of like a static friction on the couch and that really like attracts the dog hair. So if you have like a leather couch, um, I don't think that would work very well. And I don't even know if dog hair would really stick to leather anyway, but um, just keep that in mind. Like it might depend on the furniture of your couch. And then all of the hair just gets put in this little bin here. So then you just kind of scoop it up and throw it in the trash. And while we're on the topic of talking about materials that don't attract dog hair, I have to tell you about these leggings. These are the only leggings I have found that aren't just like a magnet for the dog hair. So I'll show you. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there are like, you know, a couple hairs sticking to them, but they just kind of like brush off like this. Whereas with other types of materials, if I were to sit on my couch or sit on my rug, when I would get up, there would just be like a layer of dog hair. Um, but these, these are so good. So they're from Aerie and I don't know the exact name of them, but I will look it up and I'll link them in the description box below. I have like three pairs of these and I want to get a million more. These are probably like the only leggings I'm going to be wearing for now on because they're just the only things that I can wear and not be covered in hair. Now, I would say to size up in these, I'm typically a size small and in these I get a size medium. I feel like they're just a little more comfortable and I do feel like they shrink a little bit in the wash. So anyway, I know that's not like probably why you're watching this video, but I thought that might be like a helpful tip okay back to cleaning so the muddy paw struggle is real right now this is probably our biggest issue with having dogs and keeping our house clean especially now that i have this white rug so what we do is we keep a mat by our back door so that just helps get off some of the mud when they first walk in and then it's not a perfect solution and i don't like the way this looks but we just have to keep towels by the back door. That way when they come in, we can just grab them and wipe off their paws really good before they walk through the rest of their house. 
So sometimes we'll even have like three or four towels back here just to make sure that we get them. So this one is getting pretty gross looking. So I will probably throw it in the wash tonight. And then I just keep extra towels in this basket here. So I'll also throw like some of their toys in here. And I think it's nice to just have like a decorative basket that you like looking at to throw in the things for your pets that you don't like looking at. Like their different colored toys and then also towels and things just to keep them clean. If you are planning on getting a golden retriever, you have got to invest in a good vacuum because you will be vacuuming at least once, possibly even twice a day. And it is amazing how much dog hair I can pick up every single day. Now this isn't like a very big bin, but I will go around this area of my house and need to empty this to finish like the bedrooms in the back of our house every single day. It's just crazy how much hair they lose. So I have the Shark Vertex Duo Clean Power Fins and I love this vacuum. Um, I, I tried another vacuum from Amazon, just a cheap vacuum. It could not keep up with the, the dog hair. And then we also have a Roomba vacuum that goes around by itself and I am not a huge fan of it. The issue with both of those was that the hair would just get wrapped around the brush on the bottom and it was such a pain. So I'm gonna look at this one. It's probably really dirty. Okay, it's, yeah, it's not too bad, I'll show you. So you can see here, there is a little hair wrapped around, so I need to clean that off. But with the other vacuums, it would be wrapped around this entire thing. And then it just like has this part. I don't know, <laughs> you should really look up like the details on this vacuum because I watched tons of videos on it that explained how this is so good at picking up dog hair because it kind of like brushes it into the vacuum in clumps rather than like going through this whole area. I don't know, watch the video. It's just really good at picking up dog hair. The other thing I like about this vacuum is you can take it off like this and then it has different attachments that you can use. Um, like if I need to, I don't know, get in a corner or um, use it on my couch or something. I'm telling you, dog hair will just be like floating everywhere. Sometimes I'll even have to like use this to get it off of our kitchen table. Like I don't know how the dog hair gets there, but it's just kind of like floating around in the air. So you will be vacuuming all the time. And then another nice thing about this vacuum is it folds over like this. So it's like pretty compact to store away in a closet or something. Speaking of dog hair, just like floating around and getting on top of tables and just everywhere. This is another one of my favorite tools. It's a Swiffer duster. I get them at Target. Um, you can get them in different sizes, but they can like expand. Um, this part can move in different directions and then you can just buy like replacement dusters. So I'll use this, of course, like to wipe off tables and shelves, but another, one of my favorite ways to use it is to get in areas that are difficult to get with the vacuum. So for instance, one of my like pain points <laughs> with the dog hair is that it gets trapped in the bottom of this plant stand that I use for our Berkey water filter. So I'll just use this to get in there and get all of the dog hair and it just like gets attached to this little thing and then you can pull it off and throw it in the trash. Another great way to use it is along your baseboards and of, co of course like vent covers and things like that. But this is really good at picking up dog hair too. Okay, my last tip for keeping your house clean and fresh when you have pets is using an essential oil diffuser. Now, before you just like block me out because I get questions all the time asking if essential oils are toxic to pets. What's more toxic to your pets are using the chemical filled wall plugins and air fresheners 
those are way worse for your pets than pure therapeutic grade essential oils. So I get mine from the company Young Living and I've been using them for like five years now. I constantly have diffusers going and they do not bother my dogs. My dogs actually respond really well to the oils. Um, there are of course some that you want to be careful of. Like I think eucalyptus is one that you should be careful about, but I will still diffuse them in small amounts. It doesn't bother them. I'm never like putting them directly on my pets, but in general, these are really safe to use in your home and it's going to not only add a really nice fragrance throughout your house, but it's also purifying the air. So like I said, there's dog hair floating around your entire house that you have shedding pets and this is going to really help clean the air. So I not only have diffusers going throughout my entire house, but I also will make little room sprays and I'll just spray down like our pillows and blankets and things like that. And I think that makes our house smell really fresh and just not have that like dog smell when you walk inside. All right, so I think that those are all of my tips. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them. If I think of anything else, I'll write it up in a blog post that will be over on thehomeblondie.com and I will have everything that I mentioned linked in the description box below. So thank you so much for watching. Please give this a video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will be back very soon with another one. Bye!